I find that it differs from person to person exactly when the Christmas season officially begins. That time when it's found socially acceptable to decorate the house in colorful lights, put up a Christmas tree, hang the stockings over the fireplace, and, of course, sail across the Arctic, braving all manner of ancient trial to venture deep into the chasms of ice, and despite the wishes of the old gods of this world, release Mariah Carey from her chamber so that she may sound the Galler horn and blast all I want for Christmas is you into the very minds of all beings in this sad corporeal realm. I, I actually worked in retail for a while, so to those of you who have had to suffer that song and are going to have to suffer that song for the next month, my heart goes out to you. God bless you. Best of luck. That holiday awakening, if you will, is specific to each and every individual person. That special moment where it officially just clicks. Whatever triggers that feeling is different from person to person, and even everybody in my own house isn't exactly synced up on when we should start celebrating Christmas, when we should start putting up the decorations and the lights and whatnot. But for me, the temperature outside could drastically drop. The colorful lights can be spread all over my neighborhood. The festive music can just blare out loud. Hell, chestnuts could literally roast on an open fire. But all of that would still not be enough to convince me that it's that special time of the year without just one last thing. With the utmost sincerity, I do not believe that we are officially in Christmas mode until I turn on my TV and in between programming, I see this advertisement right here. <clears throat> This 15 seconds of advertising right here is the herald of the season for me. It brings with it the carols, the presents, the dinners, the get-togethers, and the realization of them. I'm suddenly made aware that it's Christmas time after I see this commercial. We are hurled about a million ads a day, and at least in my case, don't really retain them. Everywhere we go, we're being told about the newest thing and where to buy it so much that we just kind of tune it out. It feels like somebody wants to sell me something! However, for the world of advertising, Christmas is a unique time. Without a doubt, Christmas is the time of year where commercialism is at its highest, so it would make sense that commercials would try something new to grab your attention. Hijacking that warm and fuzzy family feeling you get from hearing a Christmas carol or watching your favorite Christmas movie, and turning it into something to be sold. Whether we like it or not, ads have become a part of our daily lives, just as much as seasonal ads have become a staple of the holidays. And while the concept of being sold something can dampen the effect if you think about it too much, I do think there's a real power to these commercials. So much so that I felt compelled to look up a whole bunch of them on YouTube and make a whole video about them. Before we really jump into things though, I do want to take a moment to say that the last video that I made on animation has had more views than I ever thought anything I ever made ever would have. You've all been very nice, I really appreciate the nice comments, thank you so much for even watching this silly channel. Several massive department store chains produce ads to get you into the store quick before time runs out and little Timmy cries because you didn't get him the last Nintendo Switch they had at Target instead of paying your rent, you terrible parent. This Toys R Us commercial does just that, with old Joffrey the Giraffe here reassuring what sounds like a panicked parent on the phone that the store does indeed have what they need in stock. Hello, Toys R- Whoa! Oh, no, 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 whoa, 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 calm down, I'm here to help. Take a deep breath, tell me what you're looking for. The big plot twist of this one, of course, is that it's Santa Claus who's calling into the Toys R Us. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Wait, 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 don't, don't the elves make the toys? Yeah, whatever. Big guy freaking? Oh, yeah. Now here's a spot from everyone's favorite superstore. The pinnacle of human kindness, professionalism, and decency. Walmart. <laughs> it's set to Carol of the Bells and shows all the Walmart employees getting ready for a flood of holiday shoppers. We're opening more lanes than ever to make Christmas shopping easier. I find this commercial 
hilarious. Because if you've ever been to a Walmart, you will know that they have never had this many lanes open for any reason, any day, ever. Clothing stores had some memorable commercials trying to sell you winter outfits when temperatures drop, for better or worse. Like these Old Navy mannequin ads that, I don't know man, just kind of creep me out a little bit. Merry Christmas! Hey guys, watch this! Woohoo! <laughs> hey, who turned off the lights? Look at these on, but nobody's home. This week on the Old Navy. Speaking of creepy ads, for some reason McDonald's thought it was a good idea to produce some commercials because, you know, the Big Mac is truly the first thing that comes to mind when you're putting up a Christmas tree. It's been questioned many times and is honestly beaten to death at this point, but it just has to be pondered as to why Ronald is the mascot for this restaurant. He's already bad enough when he's lying to you about the fair treatment of his employees and detrimental health effects surrounding his food, but around Christmas they decide to put him in the middle of the woods, or film him in slow motion and in silence with no audible dialogue. He's not even promoting a holiday-themed food here. He's just appearing before children with his dead, soulless, corporate-designed features. Yeah, no. 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 Breakfast cereal ads know what's up. Selling you food, but theming it around the holiday appropriately by changing the design of the box or the color of the flakes or whatever. There are a ton of these ads, and the mascots lend themselves well to the season, getting to dress up and sing iconic Christmas carols. Yummy fruity pebbles and apples. Joy to the world! I'm gonna get to eat tricks! Ho, ho, ho. <gasps> Merry Christmas, Santa. Also, if we're talking seasonal food, it's almost like Pillsbury was made for this time of year. Their ads are always filmed with this warm atmosphere and usually feature families getting together for a good meal. When re-watching a lot of these ads, I found myself distinctly recalling this one where the two guys fight over the last crescent. Hey, that's the last crescent. Oh, do you want it? Yeah. Okay, we'll split it. This is half. That's not half. Guys, I have more. Do you have enough crescents? It also helps that the Pillsbury Doughboy himself just seems like a mascot designed to be shown off at Christmas. There's this wholesome softness to him that just matches the tone. Whether he's helping some mom out in the kitchen or Santa Claus himself, he elicits that kind of wholesome joy out of me every time I see him. <laughs> also, this is, this is like off topic, but those Christmas cookies right there are like crack to me. For real, one of the things I look forward to the most around holidays is getting those little cookies with the little designs on them that, that never quite look right. <laughs> like the Pillsbury Crescent ad, there were a few commercials I came across here that I didn't think I would instantly remember seeing, but did. One example is this Pampers ad with Silent Night playing in the background that I have a vivid memory of. Silent Night oh. Not only is it just incredibly sweet and comforting, but it's the song that really sells it. Silent Night just fits this perfectly. A good piece of classical Christmas music can go a long way. Which leads me to another commercial that, that I remember being unable to escape every year for the longest time. Everybody has their favorite classic Christmas songs, and honestly, just favorite classic songs in general, but I never, for the life of me, no matter how many times they tried to make me, wanted to buy any kind of Best Hits collection CD growing up. Especially if it was from the Now That's What I Call series of CDs. I didn't know a single person who owned this album, but I'll be damned if I didn't have to suffer this ad in between all my favorite shows for years. Admittedly, the commercial is very well produced. All the music really is iconic, but I think what makes it really special, despite my hatred of seeing it so much, is the stop motion animation. It's done in that style of the classic Rankin Bass Christmas specials with snowmen, reindeer, and whatever the hell this is supposed to be. Chestnuts roasting. Seriously, I've wondered since I was a kid, can someone please tell me what the hell this is? Come to think of it, stop motion animation is very popular to use for Christmas commercials. It's a style of animation that I hold very near and dear to my heart, and one that I'm glad seems to be making more of a comeback in the mainstream with films from Studio Laika and Guillermo del Toro. Due to the popularity of those specials though, stop motion is associated with the holiday season, and there were many ads that used that style to get the feeling of the season across. I remember this Puffs one pretty well, somehow making the idea of wiping your disgusting and runny nose cute and playful. 
but I really want to highlight this Go Mobile ad with gingerbread people. It's got a funny ending and the stop motion is great, but honestly, it's just for the fact that freaking Norm MacDonald is in it. No, I won't. It has unlimited talk and unlimited text. There's just something about this guy's voice and delivery that always made me laugh. May he rest in peace. 9-11 Airlines. <laughs> What a terrible name for an airline. It reminds me of that tragedy. As you may have noticed from some of the video quality and content of these ads, they can get pretty dated. It was just funny to go back and watch things like AOL get super hyped up like it was the next big thing. And Blockbuster, dude. Remember Blockbuster? You guys remember Blockbuster? You can watch a show about it on Netflix, which killed Blockbuster. That's, that's kind of messed up. I found a Christmas Blockbuster ad that is amazing. They turned Santa into a superhero that delivers blockbuster movies directly to your house. Santa just seems a little cooler than he used to be. Get your gift cards at Blockbuster or on the web at Blockbuster.com. However, if there's one type of product that actually gets looked back on fondly with age and only generates more nostalgia for it as the year goes by, it's video games. For me growing up, asking for a single game was more like a birthday thing. Christmas was when you hoped Santa would bring you that brand new console. Boxes full of clothes, CDs no one knows. When I wanted something for my Nintendo 64. Your parents being unable to afford dinner for the next month? At least you got your Nintendo DS. Mamma Mia! The special edition Nintendo DSi XL bundle! The funniest thing about watching these old ads is watching the confidence in showing the actual gameplay slowly increase. By the 2000s, you could confidently sell a game just based on its gameplay alone. In the 90s, they relied on mascots like Mario, Sonic, or Crash Bandicoot to sell you the attitude of the games. Okay, time out. Fangs and claws away. Peace on Earth, goodwill to each other. Where's the law? You can't stop, Grandma. You can't. The further back you go, the more you see how little actual gameplay was shown. And to be completely fair, how do you sell this? Ooh. <laughs> Probably the funniest Christmas video game ad that I came across was this one. So, this commercial is promoting the Atari 2600 game based on the movie E.T. The commercial itself isn't necessarily bad or anything, it's actually kind of cool. You get to hear John Williams' E.T. score, they used the actual E.T. puppet from the movie. It's a cute idea to see E.T. play an Atari game, and it would probably make any kid excited to play the game based on how well the ad perfectly captured the tone of the movie. But, you'll notice that in the entire 30 second commercial, they only show about one and a half seconds of the game itself. There's a reason for that. If you're one of the few that already didn't know, E.T. is considered to be one of the worst video games ever made. It was so bad, in fact, that it almost led to the collapse of the entire video game industry until, fortunately, Nintendo saved it. They actually buried copies of these games in a landfill. This is real. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the power of advertising. They knew how bad this game was, but in a time before the internet where you could hear unbiased opinions from millions who actually played the game, this ad was all you had to go off of. I love the movie, so I imagine that if I was a kid growing up around this time, excited for Christmas and having just watched E.T., I would have been begging for a copy of this game from my parents after seeing this commercial. And what a happy Christmas that would have been. Happy Holidays from Atari. By now, you've probably noticed a lot of similarities in some of the ads that I've shown. I think that's because the best of these commercials all have a similar formula that they follow. A few special ingredients that they have to include that separates a regular everyday ad from a Christmas one. I think the first and most important thing is the portrayal of warmth or cold. Being outside in the elements is often shown with a cooler blue tone. The snow is always blowing hard, and every inch of the screen is covered in white snow. 
This is usually how the commercial begins, showing the harsh weather or life before you buy whatever it is they're selling you. Inside, however, surrounded by family and friends, is that nice, warm hue. The fire is crackling loudly and people are smiling and laughing, bright lights are everywhere. All these shots portray holiday joy, joy that can only be experienced by, of course, buying the product advertised. The use of popular Christmas music, as I said before, is another essential ingredient. Whether popular classical pieces used as instrumental background music, or Christmas carols actually sung by the characters in the commercial. There can also be a dash of humor. If you do a Christmas ad right, you can literally spawn a series of them. For a good example of this, look no further than the Coca-Cola polar bears. Starting in 1993, Coke would produce CGI shorts based around polar bears that liked to kick back and watch the northern lights, party, and of course, drink a Coke. These ads played for years and years, eventually culminating in a short film directed by Ridley Scott, which is very weird. The polar bears became the mascots for Coke for a long time, and I think the fact that they kept producing these commercials in this style for so long speaks to just how much a 30 second TV spot can stick in our heads. Some commercials are just so well made that we never forget them. This M&M's and Santa crossover is a classic. It's still funny. <laughs> he does exist! They do exist. Oh. Uh, Santa? The Fruit of the Loom guys decorating their house is also a personal favorite. They don't even show any clothing in this. It's just a nice little short with these characters all hanging out. And if we're talking insanely well-made ads, Sainsbury could have won an Oscar. This commercial is based on the actual true story during World War I, where German and British soldiers, just for the day of Christmas, entered a truce just to celebrate the holiday. It's probably the most powerful commercial ever produced. It premiered in 2014, and it's looked back on now as one of the best to ever capture the magic of the season. There's one classic here that I can't not mention. Everyone's seen it. Everyone loves it. It's that damn Campbell's ad. <laughs> It's got all the ingredients that make a Christmas commercial work. The classic song, the cool and warm tones, a bit of humor, everything about it just screams the holiday for me. And this spot premiered years before I was born, and yet I grew up watching it on TV. If a commercial is good enough, it can become as much of a Christmas tradition as any other. It can become something that you associate with the holiday itself. And that brings me all the way back to the very first ad that I talked about in this video. Hershey's premiered this commercial back in 1989, and it was originally done with stop motion. It was so successful that it still plays to this very day on TV. The only changes to it being that it's now been updated to be done in smoother CG instead of stop motion. Well, there was that one time they tried to change it. They tried to add this whole extra bit to it where this little girl grabs one of the kisses and they just extend it way too long, and yeah, I don't care for it. And I don't think anybody else did either, because it went right back to normal very fast. I just saw the unaltered version of the commercial on TV the other day. What can I say? Sometimes you just can't beat a classic. So to kind of wrap this up, if you felt nostalgic about any of the things that I showed here, go look these up on YouTube. There are hour-long compilations of these things, and they are so fun to watch. Maybe there's a specific commercial that I didn't mention that you remember very fondly. Please tell me about it in the comments. Actually, something really cool about these videos is since the compilations are so long, you could put one of these on in the background of your next Christmas party. However you celebrate the holidays, for me, Christmas ads are just essential to part of that celebration, and I felt like making a video about them. And thank you so much for sticking around to watch that video. And thank you again for the very kind response to the last video that I made. I really hope that you enjoy this one as well, and I'll catch you next time.